Hey guys, it's Joe and Justin with Tuning Tuesday Season 2, Episode 1. As you guys probably just saw, Justin has changed from Starbucks to Firehouse. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new year, new Justin. <laughs> um, oh man. So we haven't had a Tuning Tuesday episode in a couple weeks now. It's crazy, Joe. So flown by. The is there is there a lot of stuff you have to talk about? I know my holidays are kind of strictly like family stuff and boring stuff that they don't really care about. And the track was closed here for the vast majority of that. They take a what Christmas vacation, New Year's vacation at the track. Yeah, I think the first Much deserved. The first day it was back open was a uh, either this Funday Sunday Sunday. Yep. Sunday. But it wasn't required. It was by choice because things were kind of slow for them anyways. The weather's been great. Yeah, the weather's been fantastic. And we had a couple rainy days, but... Yeah, I think I was looking at the averages for a uh, rain forecast. Like, all the way up until March or April, the rain average is four days out of the month for January, oh, wow. February, April, March. So... Uh, you get into, like, the 16 days a month in, like, June, July, and August and all that stuff. So as far as pent up demand for tuning questions from our customers and followers. Yeah, what did you guys have from over the uh, the break that you wanted or answered or pent up tuning content for us to talk about? Um I mean we did we did dyno tune quite a few cars over the holidays. We <laughs> did. And that and we're dyno tuning a lot over the next month or so. We have a lot yeah. on the schedule for dyno tunes. The year I think is I have one like almost every day. The year is off to a great start. Yeah. There really has been uh, no lull for us since December, since November and Black Friday. Mm -hmm. um, which brings up something that we're going to do on the show later on this afternoon, later on in the show. Mm -hmm. We're going to give away a Gen 3 uh, or Gen 2 head unit mm -hmm. and a full kit as part of our Black Friday promotion. So we'll mm -hmm. talk about that throughout the show, but we need to get you following liking, subscribing, and sharing mm -hmm. to, so as many people as possible see this blower giveaway and this kit giveaway that we're doing. You need that bell notification <clears throat> for Ding! YouTube. Yep. Get that notification push. Sorry, I was, I was a little annoying. Ah, that's all good. I don't think it was um, that annoying. But, but let's tell me, I mean, what have you worked on unique lately? Mm, the Revology cars are arguably unique. I've done a couple of those. Um, I think one of those has a video coming out soon. The, yeah. Or had one that came out. And then they brought another one by that was similar to that bullet style car. Um, that one was auto swapped as well. I think See, that was car 29 for them that they brought by. Yeah, and we're actually tuning another car for them right now. And mm -hmm. there's really a couple interesting things to note. These Revology cars are freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. um, they've got Gen 2 Coyote um, crate, uh, crate engines in them with control packs from Ford Racing, mm -hmm. and you actually spent a lot of time getting them to run right. Because mm -hmm. the Ford Racing tune is just really not set up for a swap, is yeah. what we're finding out, right? Yeah, and it's, will it physically work? Yes, but if you, in terms of like drivability and stuff, what they, it's surprising what they don't know to do, but... Uh, Very surprising. <laughs> but they will drive a lot better with a tune if you actually are gonna be driving these cars. Because they do um, IMRC deletes. They do IMRC deletes, but they don't do it right, so the car doesn't drive right. So that's what you're able to fix in the tune, mm -hmm. is basically calibrate a Gen 2 Coyote control pack for IMRC deletes. Now, well, why doesn't Ford Racing just leave the IMRCs on there? Well, I guess they don't really fit in a they lot of They don't always the, fit in all the packaging. Yeah, the engine bays. I mean, technically, a, a manifold with IMRCs will not fit an 11 to 14 Coyote. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of crazy, something that recent, but those canisters on the back are huge. Yeah. They take and up a lot of room. It's worth noting that Revology keeps IMRCs. Oh, really? So, yeah. Part of the issue is that they, not only do they delete IMRCs, but they're not doing it correctly in the tune, but Revology was maintaining the use of IMRCs, but since they're disabled in the tune, the IMRCs never close. Ah. So it... Regardless of whether or not Revology is maintaining the use of IMRCs, the cars won't drive right, even if you didn't use them with the way that the IMRCs gotcha. are disabled on the file. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're really up against two problems. You can't use the IMRCs if you do choose to keep them, mm -hmm. and there's not a correct calibration with or without IMRCs in mm -hmm. the tune. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. I understand they have to deal with both sides of it. People, where most people are wanting to delete IMRCs, but if you're going to... 
If you're going to set up the cal for deleted IMRCs, you actually need to do all of it. And there's there's some other things about coyote swaps, like changing the mass error transfer function, the mass error meter location and transfer function. If you don't, they put a general mass error transfer function in the file. Mm -hmm. And it's really better to dial it in for an individual cold air. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's set up stock with just the like 15 to 17 GT mass error transfer function with no other tweaks to it. So if you don't use that housing that they include or something roundabouts the same shape, distance, yeah. filter location type stuff, then it's technically not right. It'll learn it. Like your your first startup will probably be a little rough until the the adaptives kick in, but the other problem is your load calculation that moves you through the spark tables and every other table is <laughs> not going to be accurate. So it'll physically run and drive and with how they with how they allow the knock sensors to work kind of like they did in the, the Mustangs, it will add and pull timing as necessary and it's just kind of like a a ballpark thing where like nine, I'd say 90% of people that are installing them in cars would never notice a problem or never know that there was a problem. But it's one of those things where us, we're like, oh, and what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> Tuner's biggest pet fee peeve, incorrect load calculation. Because <laughs> yeah. like Joe said, you move through the spark tables, you can run either run too much timing, which is dangerous. That's why people, oh, that's the number eight cylinder issue. That's 95% of it. <laughs> so. And then you have the issue of not moving through VCT properly because mm. VCT is desired load, actual load stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. So let's see, if load was too low, you'd never get the optimum power and get to the, the best cam timing for wide open throttle power. And that's not a problem with a Revology car, but a problem I've seen on other swap cars is you got to make sure you have full range of pedal because one of the entry criteria for control pack ECUs and even stock ECUs is a pedal for pedal. optimal power cam and optimal power enrichment. Yeah, so a separate issue Joe mentioned, <laughs> the infamous floor mat under the pedal yeah. <laughs> issue. Um, mm. So, moral of the story, always tune your Coyote swaps. Another note about Coyote swaps, SCT has not fixed their firmware to support Coyote swaps on the RevX BDX. So mm -hmm. use an old X4, or in some cases we can support you with HP tuners engage and that's that's how it's done. We, we are very much experts in that at <laughs> yeah. this point. Oh, other one. Um, we have an 11 to 14 IAT kit for if you use a supercharger on a 11 to 14 control pack, not like a power by the hour control pack because they use a, a stock style strategy, but if you're using a 11 to 14 control pack with the Ford Racing strategy, we make an IAT kit specifically for those so that they can pick up downstream air temp properly. You can't pin those like you can a Roush kit. Yeah, so we've got a harness that intercepts the MAF IAT signal kind of like we do with the 15 IAT kit um, to support that. That's, that's really critical too. Mm -hmm. Are we starting to get any questions coming in the door, Carrie? We do, we have some questions and some comments. So uh, I'm gonna read some of the comments off just to give everybody a little bit of love. Uh, Steve Hall says, uh, hi, Carrie, Jess and Joe, greetings from Hold rainy off. New Jersey. Oh, sad. Um, Michael Slocum Sr. says, happy new year to you guys. What are your recommendations for tuning a 2012 F250 6.2 liter? Um, depending on what you're looking to get out of it, we can tune that. It, We're a, lot, a lot of those guys want gas mileage. Yeah, I mean... Mm -hmm. Within reason, you're not going to get much more out of a tune. It's but, a uh, lot of truck to move with a little bit of engine. Exactly. We actually get a couple of inquiries from uh, V10 guys. They're like, hey, is there anything you can do about gas mileage? Eh, there's a little bit, but don't expect five mile per gallon gain. It's, it's a V10 and they just notoriously tear yeah. up gas mileage. So, I mean, something like that, that truck, what we need to know is do you want it calibrated for fuel economy, performance, are you doing towing? Mm -hmm. Some even details like, are you in the mountains? Is the shift schedule bothering you? Or are you just on flat ground? Um, we can most definitely tune it, but we need a little specifics on what you want. Because with the Mustang and even like the F-150 stuff, it's always a little more power. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's more, and we go through and do our process with that truck. Mm -hmm. It's really not the right engine for how big of a truck it is. So mm -hmm. we want, we're trying to figure out what you want out of it. And then we can absolutely yeah. custom tune it. Exactly. Slab Shack's on the line. He says, What's Happy up, New Shack? Year, guys. Happy New Year, man. It's, and girls. It's been so and long, girls. I forgot. Like, well, Slab Shack's a boy, a so a Happy New Year, man. I know, but <laughs> he, he forgets there's a girl over here, too. Uh -huh. um, 
Bry2KTV says, Hi guys, Outlawed Streetcars uh, in Tempe, Arizona is putting in my Roush 2.3 and the 8 rib VMP pulley kit. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice. So pretty excited there. Um, R says for... R for what's considered good compression or what's considered good compression for 2012 GT 500. If you need mileage, it has 20,000 K on it. Gosh, what was Holder hot engine. I think it's like 170 to like 190. That I would sounds, say it's good compression. I think that sounds about right. When I used to compression test my GT 500. And that'd be like a stock cams type thing. If you had mm. aftermarket cams, it's going to drop the, the static compression yeah. or not static. I guess the, the measured compression, kind of like dyna yeah, dynamic, dynamic compression yeah. ratio. Yeah, what people don't realize is like a compression test is the biggest thing is that all the cylinders are plus a, or minus. It's a consistency thing. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with like harbor freight gauges and some of the lower end compression testers. Make sure it's tight um, and don't really focus on the numbers so much as uh, an even yeah. or within 5% number then, across the board. And that's all you can really tell is, you know, just is your compression right? Cylinder to cylinder and bank to bank. Because you could actually mm -hmm. spot cam timing issues, major cam timing issues, not minor cam timing issues. I'd say it's kind of like measuring your resting heart rate only. It tells it's you a little bit of the picture. That's and it's, it's a good measure of like if you're in the ballpark of where you should be, but yeah. it's not like the be all end all. If your resting heart rate's 120, you might need to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. It, but if it's like, you know, 60 to 80, maybe you know, 90, you're probably all right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I have to touch the check with Rebecca on the. Accepted. Yeah, we're not doctors, <laughs> so don't, don't quote us on that. Yeah. <laughs> um. My resting heart rate heart rate's about between sixty and sixty five. To, your Fitbit tells you that. Yeah, mine's fifty eight. Yeah. <laughs> You're also several years. Yeah, seventy seven right now. Nice. Um, Col Calandis says Happy New Year, Justin and Joe. Travis, Happy New, Happy New Year, everybody. Cameron says What's up? Hola. Uh, Shelby Canada West, a regular. Hello everyone. Plus Carrie. Big Daddy Trucker, what's up? You're getting a lot of highs. Everybody's missed you guys for over the last few weeks. Oh, oh thanks. Mac Helms says he has a 07 GT500 with a VMP supercharger. Just got it tuned, mm -hmm. and it has no bottom. Is that normal? I would have to see a log to see what you're talking about because no bottom could be a, a lot of stuff. I've seen guys think that something has no bottom when they have traction control on. That'll do it. <laughs> and uh, as they get increased vehicle speed, their, their traction usually increases a little bit. Another and good one, anytime somebody does a supercharger swap, the mm -hmm. bypass valve vacuum lines. Yeah. If those royally got screwed up and that bypass valve is, is staying open until you generate enough boost to somehow slam it shut, you get weird crap. That and the GT500s, unless the, whoever's tuning it disabled the SIP test stuff, usually the SIP logic will pick up the... Fail off, yeah. Yep, yep. So it's really a yeah, really combination of tuning and hardware. All stuff that's pretty easy to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. You know, send us in a data log. Um, contact our sales and support team for proper installation procedures. We can get you squared away. Oh, show. If you're just tuning in, just a FYI. If you're hi Lou, I see you're late. Um, if you're just tuning in, we will be announcing the blower giveaway later on in the show towards the end. But I will tell you that they are looking for a certain number of likes, shares, and subscribe. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Once they hit that number, they will be announcing the winner. Yes. Keep those view. We want to get a lot of live viewers on, a lot of subscribers and shares. That and the more viewers we have on, the more potential there is for the person that won to be viewing it. Yeah. So if you have a friend that purchased a VMP kit um, over the holidays, or blower. Tag them, get them watching because mm. how cool would that be? Should we make it a requirement that <laughs> we won't reach out to you? You have to reach out to us? Uh, <laughs> through, through the power of social medias and your yep. friends tagging you. Exactly. Um, oh, I mean, which I, I don't, like, I don't want to assume that everybody's on social media, but we can talk to a lot of our customers through social media. Through social find media. Out, find out about our promotions and sales and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, Calandis, we've seen him in real life and we've, and, and he's, and he watches our show. Yeah. So, uh, Steve Bowen is, uh, watching. He just installed a Gen 3 R, uh, Gen 3 on his GT500, replaced an upgrade, upgraded slash replaced a Gen 2 R. So interesting. we got him one of the new two seven pulleys cause that's kind of, um, 
what we feel is the the in between. Yeah, in between the fuzzy two line and two eight. The love is coming in. Travis is on there giving us love too. Awesome. Um, Max Andreev, I guess it's Andreev, says yeah. hi everyone. I'm ready for my free blower. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jonathan's on the line. Uh, he says, what up? I have a new build I'm going to bring to us for tuning this summer. A Gen 2 Coyote 6R80 swapped notch. Ooh, that's going to be a fun car, John. Uh, that's Jonathan Whitman. Whitman or Whitaker? Oh, Whitaker. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Northwest Horsepower says, hi, guys. How do you feel about centrifugal superchargers on a Cobra Jet manifold? They get the job done. That should make some mean top end. Slab Shack says, What's, what are the chances of you guys doing my cam swap when you come to Houston? Uh, I'd say a cam swap in the GT500 is a so small a chance. So yeah. small. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's something we want to do in the shop on a lift in a clean environment. Um, if you want to ship the car here, we can most absolutely, absolutely we do We get shipments it. from Texas basically all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the world today, you know, logistics... Mm -hmm. It's pretty cheap, so... Yeah, and finding quotes and stuff is just a couple mouse clicks and a few keywords away. What is it, uship.com or something? Yeah, uship, and there's a, there's a few of those out there. So this is actually kind of nice to, see, to hear. So John Hall had purchased uh, a, a Gen 3 kit during the Black Friday sale, mm -hmm. and he had a friend that helped him install it, and he was sold on the VMP equipment just based on the instructions that were provided. So it's awesome. good to know that we're able to provide you with that type of information and you're finding it a benefit. That's mm -hmm. great to hear. Story. We spend a lot of time on instructions. I can tell you that. I was going to say, yeah, between that and the install videos. Um, yeah, exactly. We try to give you as much information as we can. Eli says, how much does the manifold primary sizing affect a turbo car? I was looking at the CG Fab hot side kit but it only comes in one three quarters, not one seven eighths. I don't think you'd notice too much difference on the the feed side of the turbo in terms of like the primary size for the, the headers. We actually, I mean, there's guys even with log manifolds that make great power. Yeah, I mean, we actually looked into this a lot for Rebecca's car because it was almost a turbo car. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's in reference to the, the 1815 car. Yeah, not uh, the, the eleven, the black carbon fiber car, mm -hmm. uh, Lilith, um, and I mean for a Coyote <laughs> up to a thousand, twelve hundred rubble horsepower, even one and a half is fine. So, it I'd say that making sure the turbo size properly is of more priority than worrying yeah. about inch and three quarter versus inch and seven eighths. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Joe said, I mean camshaft, turbo, overall power level, that's going to be more important. Um. Janssen50 says, Happy New Year, all the best for 2019. Mm -hmm. What trans brake do you use on a 6R80? Ever use a JMS Launch, launch Max? I feel like we've been gotten that question a couple times. We have. We've had some customers that have had uh, some problems with them. I know of people that have used them with no problems. Um, I'd say our, our go-to would probably be the, the double relay. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, I mean, the two relay, we've actually played with it. It works. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you need to complicate it beyond a couple of relays. That, and for some applications, you should look into the uh, HP Tuners trans brake two-step stuff that they're doing. Software. Software. <laughs> That's even better. Yeah, hit up uh, Braden or Eric about that stuff. I think those are the two that would be working on it. Uh, Northwest Horsepower says, also, awesome video about the 18 manifold installed. I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, those, uh, those tuning inquiries. So I have IMRC stuck open codes. Okay. Check out this wiring diagram. Check out this uh, vacuum diagram. So that's good, uh, uh, that's good content for the upcoming video, A Day in the Life of a Tuner. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that really gives you some insight into what we do at BMP. Like, Email diagnostics. <laughs> yeah. Tun yeah. Tuning is a, tuning is part, is only half the battle. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we don't, we're not complaining because we love doing this. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of skill that goes into it. Mm -hmm. Because we have to, 
remotely via email figure out what's wrong with your car. That and it's a, uh, in some cases it's kind of like an uphill battle because they're like, oh well, someone someone says it's the tune. Someone isn't diagnosing your car via email, so. You know, the internet has led to a plethora of experts with yes. no real expertise. Exactly. So my, I guess where I'm going with that is I'm glad that we have the videos out there for that stuff because it's going to help a lot of people, yeah. which helps me. Uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help people order the parts from us, order the tuning, put them on, and they just freaking work because, you know, we set the expectation, we gave you the instructions, everything. And I know it's a, a pinch point slash a a thorn in the side of other tuners as well with people not in doing the vacuum harness right or not doing the the wiring right if they're wiring it themselves and it just overall should make everything easier for everybody now yeah. that videos out there so um john hall wants to know are we confirmed for texas 2k19 oh john so Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. What blower do you have on your car? His you, name is my name. And do you want to race your car in a small blower class at Texas 2K? Oh man. Um, so uh, yeah, there shouldn't be any reason why we shouldn't be able to make all this happen. It's I mean it's still in the planning stages, but uh, everybody's on board. I talked to another um, good shop that we work with, uh, Triangle Speed Shop, mm -hmm. and they want to bring some cars out for Texas 2K. So awesome. I don't know if they'll be able to bring their I know they're running out of slots. Yeah, I think uh, there was only 40 streetcar slots left, and then okay. like there was another slot that they're down to like 10 or 20 of. We'll probably be able to open up some more for the small blower class that I'm working with Peter on. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Dirty D says, "What horsepower were the thousand cc injectors that come with the Stage Three kit support with E85? I have four fuel system." I'd say they're going to be on the edge of what they're capable of around eight, 850 wheel, somewhere in that range. Um, and for what it's worth, we give pretty conservative numbers because we don't know who's tuning it and setting it up. So we want to ensure the best possible success. So it's, yeah, and that it does depend highly upon whether or not you're using a boost reference fuel system, um, what base fuel pressure is at, and what a, and what command and lambda what the, the tuner's commanding. Like you can get a lot more headroom out of an injector commanding 80, 82 lambda than you can commanding 72 lambda. Or the next concern becomes cat protection, whether or not you have cats, whether the injector is adequately able to fuel for cat protection at those higher horsepower levels on the 85. Yeah, so those are just some of the things that go into it, like mm -hmm. Joe said, but that's a good general baseline and I mean the cool thing is Gen 3 with ID 1000s we know it'll do that on what a 75 millimeter pulley yeah 79 and a 5 percent or a 75 that's kind of yeah. like the the edge of what those injectors are capable of I'd really recommend moving to a 1100 or 1300 cc injector to go much past that yeah if you're going to do that level of build just go ahead and buy the bigger injectors it does depend on RPM too yeah these guys trying to be heroes at 8500 <laughs> RPM Oh, uh, yeah. gosh, Joe, like a couple of years ago, that would just be insane, but mm -hmm. the Coyote will take it. Yeah, it'll take it. All right, I have quite a few questions, guys, so I want to try and get through some of them. Uh, mm -hmm. It was asked over on YouTube, is it correct that we are having a meet here on January 26th with that dude in blue? And I wanted to confirm, yes, on January 26th from 10 to 1, that dude in blue will be here and, and VMP is hosting a meet and greet. So um, take a look at your calendars. If you're in the area, come by between, like I said, 10 and 1. Um, you can meet that dude in blue and meet VMP crew and kind of hang out for a few hours. David will be here. Um, with that said, I have a number of questions I'd like to try and see if we can get through. Yeah, let's run through. Ryan says, how much timing should you see in your 93 tune versus your E85 tune? And if your car doesn't see any knock, does it add any timing beyond that point? What 93 tune, what E85 tune? Blower car, naturally aspirated, 15, 17, 11, and 14. We can throw, for the sake of expediency, um, 15 to 17 car, 93 octane, anywhere from 25 to 28 degrees, depending on how happy it is. On E85, anywhere from 27 to 31. Um, 11 to 14 car, a little bit less on 93, and then uh, ballpark the same on E85. Uh, let's 
I would like to see more topics on tuning like best practices or your approach to your process going through a tune for say a NA and then maybe power adder also what what it looks like when you're collecting data or so, what you're looking so for when collecting data. That kind of brings us to the fuzzy point of are we teaching you how to tune or are we out here trying to make sure that you buy the best combination of parts so that your your setup is going to be compatible. What what has more value at the end of the day to the consumer? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's really cool to understand the process. And if you, with the questions we get asked, well, there's a lot of insight into the process, I think. Yeah. But, um, and, and honestly, that our process and our formula of how we do what we do to be successful, number one, it's all in our heads. Mm -hmm. We go through it without even thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> number two, it's kind of proprietary. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, a, if you, if you want to, if you want a course on how to tune or what to look for the process, I'd suggest hitting up uh, probably like Banish's books, Banish's DVDs first, um, and then maybe look into another method of tuning, whether it's tuning school or something like that. Just go out there and get the information. Um, ask us, yeah, have, educate yourself and ask mm -hmm. us some questions and, and we'll give you a little bit of insight. Yeah, I don't think we really have the interest in doing a how to tune video. Yeah. Um, says, hey guys, no limits racing says, hey guys, working on an O3 Lightning, when mm -hmm. idling, bank one short time was running 0.75. Mm -hmm. Checked all normal things and couldn't find anything. Changed fuel pressure regulator on a whim and short term. And oh. short term what? That's all it says. So, on a Lightning. There's some more. The, you, re uh, you really won't get bank-to-bank -bank fueling issues from a fuel pressure regulator mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, here it is. He, he did it in another. It says, uh, trim on bank one was good and matching bank two. However, uh, how could the fuel pressure regulator affect ST trim on only one bank? I wouldn't say that the two necessarily have a direct correlation whether or not you change the fuel pressure regulator because if you have an O2 sensor that's bad or an O2 sensor that the PCM deems to be bad, you will get fuel trim data that's mirrored bank to bank um, you can usually tell because the values and the two exactly follow each other it's not like a one's at 103 one's yeah. at 10 they're usually both at 1.03 and to kind of say what joe's saying you know in a little bit different way is that i mean basically you have something else going on because that doesn't correlate you made a little bit of change in fuel pressure in one bank's you know all of a sudden it's fine now yeah so i'd say it the first thing I would do is start looking for vacuum leaks on a blower truck or blower car like that. It's kind of hard to get a bank to bank um, disparity in fueling just because of how large the common area of the plenum is. Um, if you've changed injectors recently, look at injector O-rings or injector connectors. You usually get injector circuit codes if you have an injector that's not connected. And if it's an older lightning setup that doesn't really get a lot of miles, you may also want to look into the possibility of a clogged fuel injector. Fuel injector clinic offers uh, injector Clean. cleaning and servicing. I've seen a uh, couple F-150s that have needed injector cleanings, um, like with injectors straight up getting so clogged that they don't really inject anything. 100,000 mile asking, injectors. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go the ahead. person asking about the tuning says, yep, I get it. Understand it's proprietary. I have read all the books and taken the classes. Like, uh... Mm -hmm. HP's Academy, EFI University, etc. Yeah, you should be pretty pretty well set, man. Um, if I were you, I'd just pick up some HP Tuner software and just start doing it yourself. Mad Max says hello, everyone. Hope my name is on the list for the free blower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nutty Five O says hi, guys. Enjoying all the Chucky videos. Looking forward to all your other projects coming on here. Also, would love to see some of the GT Five Hundred projects too. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, I drove the GT500 home this weekend, mm -hmm. tested um, on Probably the most driving it's gotten in a couple months. So we do Sad. have a number of things coming up for the GT500. So yeah. don't think that we've forgotten about it. We have not. We've had a lot of other projects going on. Um, we had to do some troubleshooting on the GT500, but we do have some projects coming up. We also have some ideas coming up for UF150 guys, too. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, so um, All GT, the content. GT500 is going to make some horsepower with the Gen 3 and with long tubes and then with cams. And the big thing that I was saying is I drove it home to test a revised VMP160 throttle body. Mm -hmm. um, so we're starting to send those out to a couple of people um, that, have, uh, that have them on order or previously got them. 
So mm -hmm. Joe and I'll be working on that more. But uh, yeah. Hey, Carrie, while we got a lull for a second, everybody, let's get some more likes and some more shares and some more subscribes to, uh, to get everybody pumped up for that blower and, and kit giveaway that we're going to do later on in the show. Get enough of those coming, we'll pull that hat out. Yeah. Yeah, if you know that a buddy that purchased during the Black Friday sale or if you did the install for a buddy or what have you, make sure that you know um, so that that way, make sure you let them know so that they can come on and see whether or not they were the winner or not. Yeah, let's get 100 live viewers. No, That'd man. be good. What are we at now? On uh, YouTube, you're 63. Okay, and Facebook is probably in the 40s? In the 30s. 30s. Okay, so we're close. Are you looking for, on one channel, 100 viewers? It'd be nice to hit 100 on YouTube. We've done it before. Mm -hmm. Texas Mile. Oh, man. On Saturday Chad Dow says, Chad Dow says 160 for the win. <laughs> uh, you're getting a lot of likes. John Pavia says, Justin, when are you going to rebuild the blue V6? I've been getting on Justin about that for a few Everybody's years. Everybody's been talking about it because I'm cleaning out the old shop. Um, Finding all these extra parts you have. You just need to put a 3A twin turbo back in it. Go back to the old school stuff. No, no. With what you know now, put that thing on the 85, run 990s with it. Shit, it would make 700 <laughs> horsepower. Uh, the turbo technology these days. Yeah. But no, Pavia, I've been looking at it. It's probably going to make its way over to the new shop sooner or later because I'm going to sell that house over there in Deltona. Um, you got to get on that. The market's still still, still pretty decent still right now. The market's booming right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Jennings, hello, Carrie, Joe, and Justin. Glad to have you guys back. Have been here since day one. Thank you, Marcus, for the love. Awesome, Marcus. Bubba Blue says, not a tuning question, but what tires would y'all recommend for drag racing but still decent for daily drivability? Um, for most setups, it's going to be a drag radial. Um, I'd say it really depends on like your ratio of what you're doing, whether or not it really rains in your area and you're going to be driving it. The best um, drag radials suck in rain. So like the ET Street SS and the ET Street R, that there's some you're tread die. <laughs> on the SS, but the compound is just not good for wet conditions. Yeah. Um, mm. You go to a Nitto, I feel like they're slightly better in the wet, but the NTO 5R doesn't have a lot of tread. No, I was going to say like a 555R is decent in the rain, yeah. but like an 05R is not decent in the rain. Like if you've got to deal with weather, then some of the stickier street tires, there's actually some good compounds out there these days, might be Chad's, a little better off. Chad Dowd says slicks. Slicks. Yes, Chad. Slicks all the time. <laughs> Wheel is on the Every street. Day. Gen 3 for the win. <laughs> I get it. 5,000 stalls. <laughs> <laughs> all of it. Um, Chad, since you're on the line here and you're, you're watching, I know that you saw the post that we did on the blog um, with your car. And mm -hmm. I don't know, are you signed up for our newsletter? Just tell me yes or no. If not, uh, let's get you signed up on there too because um, you were recently in that as well. It went out today. So hopefully oh, you'll man. get it. He shared his blog post like 160 times. It was pretty cool. Awesome. Impressive. Yeah, that's great. Um, Stephen Bowen says, what's up, guys? Woohoo. Hey, um, Steve. Slim Timon says, at what boost level and use of the vehicle when using your Gen 3, mm -hmm. do you recommend converting the 15 to 17 from 11 millimeters to 12 millimeters head bolts? A lot. A fucking lot. Is anyone converting? Like actually drilling and tapping the block yeah. after 12 millimeters? Michael's doing it and some other people are doing it because it, um, the shorter head bolts tend to crack mains and weird stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Actually found out Rebecca's engine is the smaller, shorter head bolts, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and it's it's been holding up at that power level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, thousand plus wheel through a turbo four hundred. So. And that one's head studs. Yeah, ARP head studs. So, I mean, twelve hundred, twenty five, thirty pounds of boost. It's the problem with this stuff is is Coyote blocks are kind of disposable, anyways. <laughs> it's sad that they are because they're like a grand new. Yeah. Which in some ways is a lot, some ways is cheap. Mm -hmm. For all the technology that's in the Coyote, you, mm -hmm. can, you can put them together from parts for not a lot of money. Yeah. But mm. there's no definite answer on that. Um, Mr. Applesauce96 says, hey, if you need an 18 GT to test your new Gen 3 supercharger on, I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> this tribute. I like it. <laughs> we actually have a 18 GT auto with a... Uh, with a Roush blower on it. Yeah, 18 GT Auto and then uh, 18 F-150 Auto. Mm -hmm. 5 liter. Because an S-150, it could be anything. Yeah. As Jeff found out. 
the diesel. I don't know what displacement that oh. one is. It's like three liter or something. I think it's three liter power stroke. Word on, the, word on the street is Jeff Smith drove every single uh, F-150 engine before deciding on which one to I believe purchase. that. I think he really should have drove a tuned 5.0. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, I felt lazy. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so King Cobra wants to know, how do I win a blower? Um, um, buying one on Black Friday would have been the key there. We ran a special promotion on uh, Black Friday. And anybody that purchased during that time frame is entered in a drawing that we are going to do today. Once we get enough uh, likes, subscribes, and shares, and views. Oh, YouTube's up to 69. Oh, man. So we're doing pretty good. Number. Keep it going up, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you purchased a VMP blower kit or VMP head unit from VMP Performance during Black Friday, our Black Friday promotion... We are, you are automatically entered into a drawing to have that purchase price refunded. Yeah, purchase price of the blower refunded. Lethal, Carrie mentioned it had to be purchased from VMP because uh, one of our dealers, Lethal Performance, did a similar promotion. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> actually, they actually already drew their people. I so. so. Yep, they drew their people, and so we are drawing ours today. Yes. So we will be refunding the purchase price of one head unit and one kit. So um, we will be giving that information in a little bit. John Hanlon says, great show, first time here. Excellent, welcome. Awesome. Um, we have a 13 F-150 with a Roush supercharger. What would be the best to get the most out of it? A handheld programmer or custom tune? I will be in Florida next year, definitely stopping by. Next year's a long time from now. And he said handheld tuner and a custom tune? Or a custom tune. Hand, or a custom tune. What would be better to get the most out of it? I'd say that the two aren't necessarily mutually <laughs> exclusive. Um, the handheld tuner doesn't do anything without a custom tune. Yeah, and luckily advice. you're talking to the experts. <laughs> exactly. I'd say that the only way you can really get around that is with a uh, HP and us doing a direct flash. Yeah. And even then, it, the engage makes more sense for most people. But what he's really asking is, what does he need to do to get that truck running good? Um, I'd say a tune would definitely be a first good step. Yeah. But in order to get that tune on the truck, you do need a handheld. So. Yeah. And I mean, um, and actually, we can ship that to you. Mm -hmm. And that's a. We tune combinations like that remotely all the time. We'll mm -hmm. send you a tune, you'll load it on, it's gonna run good. Take a data log, we'll fine tune it for you, but the tune mm -hmm. we send is gonna run good. Yeah. Um, what do you, how much it. horsepower do you think is on the table here? King Cobra Sorry. says, dang, that sucks. I've been living under a rock. He's the one that asked about how, how do you win a blower. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. The best man. thing I can say, though, is, you know, we have sales and other things throughout the year. Make sure mm -hmm. you watch our social media because you never know w what other opportunities might arise. I'd say that the, uh, the question regarding horsepower and stuff, it's highly dependent on what fuel you run. If you're one of those guys that runs 87 because I don't get on it or something like that. The, the peak power gain isn't going to be too significant, probably 510 horsepower. But if you're one of the guys that's willing to fill that 23 or 32 gallon tank up with 93 and spend the extra, what's well, probably $10 on a tank, then uh, well, the gains get a bit more substantial. Well, I think he said he had a Roush blower too. Oh, yeah. interesting. If you said he had a Roush blower, so, we'd be looking at probably 30 to 50 horsepower on 93 it's, octane. It's a huge improvement. I mean, yeah. we love Roush for what they do, warranty, 50 state legal stuff. Um, and by the way, tuning it doesn't necessarily make it illegal or mm -hmm. illegal, but um, there's so much on the table. I mean... And there has to be for what they do. With yeah. It. There's um, a smaller pulley, a calibration, a throttle body, our mm -hmm. twin jet 67 bolts right onto those. Mm -hmm. You'd be rocking and rolling. Yeah, just as an example, uh, JR was like five, 530 or 540 when he brought it in, left at like 590. And, and JR's truck picked up, I mean, what, half a second or more? Yeah. I mean, 0.5 to 0.8, especially on the truck cows or the automatic calibrations, is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Drop in the quarter, over half a second. Mm -hmm. Um, this makes me laugh every time. Justin, a.k.a. Thunder Biscuit, <laughs> says, Guys, do y'all have a blower kit for an 86.50? We do not. 
There's a lot of stuff on the market. I would talk to probably Vortec Engineering. They are the original experts on supercharging the 5.0, I feel like, the old 5.0. Mm -hmm. um, hey, I saw a funny one. I just got to point out because I've got comments and everything up on my laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, Bubble Blue, yes, please. There's not much here. There needs mm -hmm. to be more. You need more flex? Yeah. I mean, it, I can still turn wrenches with the best of them and break bolts loose and stuff, so there's like that mechanic strong type of thing going on. You can open up the peanut butter jar and that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Oh, man. Uh, and that is actually how Joe's wife chose to marry him. Yeah, you got to be able to open up the jars. <laughs> she evaluated Joe from a variety of suitors. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> how much boost can I push on a stock block sealed with long tubes on E85? How much can you or should you? Yeah, is this on night? Well, I said E85. I'd say try not to go over 17 pounds on stock head bolts. Um, Gen 2 motor will most likely live at that level, but you'll usually, depending on how crazy you get with timing and stuff, um, it'll usually stretch head bolts and start uh, drinking some coolant. Um, I'd like to be closer to that 14, 15 PSI range on E85 if you want it to live a while. Uh, I bought a Gen 2R for my GT500 over the break. I haven't gotten a chance to install it yet, though. So. Sweet. Hell Get yeah. it on, man. Uh, Gen 2R is still a great, low-cost option. Mm -hmm. I mean, we rocked those things for years, went fast with them. They're going to continue to be kind of inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Gino Davis says, do you, you have tunes for an 18 F-150 2.7? How much horsepower can I gain, and is it a E85 or 93 tune? So E85 is tough on the, uh, on the EcoBoost stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of people run mixes, which we're not real crazy about. Yeah. We have a partner we work with on tuning for those, so we can most definitely sell you a tune and then supporting mods like intercooler upgrade, cold air, and everything. Catch cans? Yeah. Does EcoBoost like catch cans? Uh, please, keep the oil out of your engine. <laughs> that and the condensation that builds up in the intercooler and stuff. Oh. Oh. <laughs> What's the max horsepower you would recommend on a stock Gen 1 Coyote with one of our supercharger kits? 11.12 Gen 1 Coyote or 13.14? <laughs> Doesn't say. Yeah, the, uh, the 11.12s are notoriously a bit arguably weaker um, or seem to live shorter lives at higher power levels. I'd say, he said 93. I don't remember, just pow I think he just said power level. He didn't say what fuel. I'd say on a, like a true gen one to me, like yeah, an 11, 12, I wouldn't go much past a 700 wheel on a, like a 13, 14, on E85, relatively decent boost, I'd say 800 wheel. Um, these are both manual trans quotes and then, uh, I won't even quote 15, 17 because you asked specifically for Gen 2. So, yeah, somewhere in that 7, 800 wheel range. Um, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good safe number if you want it to live. Mm -hmm. uh, 19 Mustang GT with cold mm -hmm. air intake, BMP ported intake. Mm -hmm. um, long tube headers, X pipe. Would you recommend bigger injectors? If you're going to run E85, I'd say 47s are a good idea. But. With that, and with that being said, 1819s do have direct injection, and typically there's not a, I'd say not really an issue getting enough fuel mass in there, but it'd be nice to do it with port injector as well as to have enough on port injector alone that you can kind of know that you're in that safe zone. My friend has an S550 Roush supercharged six rib with a 69 millimeter pulley. A local mm -hmm. tuner had it tuned on a dyno, and it performs well, but it keeps shifting from third to fourth on its own. Mm -hmm. He says there's a torque limit, and SCT takes care of this. Is this true? A torque limit that SCT takes care of? Did he say what year it was again? No. S550. S550. Yeah, S550, is he, does he have it in sport mode, or does he not have it in sport mode? Is he, like, manually trying to paddle shift it up into fourth? Um... I know that's a that's a common issue with S550s. Uh, it's kind of one of those weird ones because a lot of those tables that have limits on what max OSS a shift has, not all of them are defined in SCT, um, especially 
in S550 SCT? Tuner speak. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know exactly what I think he's referring to, but there's a variety of things that could be going on. Yeah, there's a few speed limiters and OSS limiters in S550 that uh, aren't mapped out in SCT. Like, I, you know, I said before, this is all in our head, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of it's um, having the file in front of us, the data log, taking a variety of inputs and applying, you know, a quick on-the-fly formula to what's what looks like it's here and what's not here. Mm -hmm. What's happening in here? Yeah. Max says he's waiting for our video on oil pump gears install for an S550. Awesome. Soon. soon. Very, very soon. Nick says, what's up, VMP crew? Hola. Hey. Chris says, can the rev matching from the 19 be tuned into, into an... 15 to 17. I have not tried. Maybe that can be put on my R&D list. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good feedback. Like, what does everybody want to see? By that same token, the PP, it's PP2 or PP3 Ford Racing Strategy has rev match downshift for oh. manual cars. Oh, nice. So should it be able to be put into a 15, 17 car? I'd imagine so, but uh, I have not tried. So, Carrie, how many questions you got? Well, I have a number. Let's number see if we questions. can get through them fairly quickly. Okay, so let's get through some questions, and then let's get everybody warmed up to draw some winners. Mm -hmm. um, Bride2KTV says, tell Steve thank you for his help today. Uh, Chris Bouchard said, I'd love to see that rev match, Joe. Uh, Roush727 says, looking to wake up my 17 Roush Phase 2 mm -hmm. with Roush Tune. Do you suggest going with a VMP custom tune or the VMP 767 kit um, strict street car for Mexico action? Bam. There. For, for clarity's sake, those are both custom tunes. Yeah. Um, one of them's just in a package that we sell. So that's the whole reason why it's called 767 kit. Um, it's, not, it's not like it's a different level of file from 767 kit from just a level three tune. Uh, both of them should work fine, though. Either route you want to go. Uh, King Cobra says, "What's up?" He wants to. He wants us to talk about O three O four Cobra stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess. What about O three O four Cobra stuff? There's lots of stuff that could be talked about. I tuned one a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. It still had a PPRV in it. Kind of, kind of weird. It was, it was a pretty virgin car before it, it got a uh, VMP Gen uh, One put on it. And if I recall correctly, the Sonic Blue mile one? car was that like a fifty some odd thousand mile. It car? was really clean looking. Hence mm -hmm. the thought that it was low mile. It actually had like eighty k on it. Well, that's not bad for a Cobra. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It really not bad for a fifteen year old car. No. Um, Wait. Oh, go ahead. I mean, they've been making Cobras now for what 16, 16 years, and mm -hmm. and we're still supporting them. Gen 3s flying out the door for O3 Cobras and new stuff like uh, five inch cold airs. You know, and that's interesting because I hear some other people um, talk about what they want, what they want to see in, the, in that market. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a combination of offering good value because listen, it's an older car. You know, it's a $15,000 car, not a $50,000 car. So we're also focused on offering good horsepower per dollar mm -hmm. and uh, some modular upgradability with our component tree. True story. Um, what is your opinion on the Holly Sniper race manifold? It's about the same price as a CJ, but I like how it's set up with the vacuum ports on the bottom. That I like the clean. I like the CJ more from a performance standpoint, but that's not to say that the the Holly doesn't work. Um, I'd say for do you call it boost over twenty five pounds? Having a, a metal intake is probably yeah. a better idea. I'm around twenty five thirty pounds. I mean. I've heard that this, the new Ford Racing, they're with their new supplier, that the yeah. new CJs and Bosses are a little bit weaker than they have soft. been previously. But I mean, but you, you gotta be running a lot of boosts. Mm -hmm. The other thing is they seem to season over time, you get a little harder with some thermal cycling and age and stuff, go figure. The only other thing I don't like about some of those fabricated aluminum intakes is that I've seen vacuum leaks with them before. Like, got like 99% of the weld, but there's a little pinhole in one of the runners. Sounds like made in China. Yeah. With uh, no no PPAP. Yeah. Post process something something. <laughs> something something Death Star. Um, but hey, if you think about getting one, send it to us, and we'll include it in the uh, intake shootout V two, and then send it back to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Raheem Wilson says, "Sup, y'all." Hola. Uh, hey. 
Steven says, I just bought an O3 Cobra, all stock, all stock as far as I know, 3.4 mm -hmm. pulley and stock injectors. Three Can you pulleys. send me a tune for my car and never have to see it in person? Absolutely. Yeah, I would prefer an engine bay pick since you don't know what's done to it or you suspect it's a stock car, I can usually confirm visually with a few pictures of the engine bay. Uh, why is the vacuum from the brake booster different from manual to auto on an 18 manifold install? It's not so much that it's different, so much as the, the aspirator assembly is a little bit different. Ford decided to do it differently. Yeah. Um, so it was all about generating enough vacuum for the power brakes and for what it's worth. At altitude. Or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so we actually did some research into this, talked to some OEM engineers because it affects our supercharger kits. Aspirator helps generate more vacuum at higher altitudes and in other weird situations. Mm -hmm. And I guess Ford felt like the uh, automatic needed that more than the manual. However, in 15, they both of them have an aspirator now. Mm -hmm. Um. Rahim wants to know, when are we releasing a how to install a return style fuel system video? Great question. We should do that. We mm -hmm. do them all the time in the shop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just thinking that's one to add yeah. to our list. Um, Bubba Blue says, yes, Stephen, that's how it works, at least for him, regarding tunes. Uh, JNTX says, I'm late but hi. Uh, Jay says, 15 Coyote Gen 2 R, 69 millimeter pulley with FIC 1000, Siley return fuel system, and a twin 67 throttle body, JLT cold air. I want more power. Do I get cams, model blade, and bigger C, uh, cold air? What do I do to get more power? You just uh, get a Gen 3, and we'll give you some money back for your Gen 2 R. Guys, hey, stop yelling at each we're other. We're on the show. <laughs> Sorry, big Sorry, distraction. <laughs> so, Joe, he was just saying he's got a Gen 2R, 69, mm -hmm. 67, side lead fuel system, uh, 1000, once more power. Mm -hmm. Per the conversation earlier, you're kind of at the limit of the fuel system. Yeah. So, running more boost really isn't the answer unless you're going to upgrade injectors and fuel system. Mm -hmm. Cams kind of increase efficiency and airflow, so. They'll help a little bit, but you're still increasing airflow. Yeah. You've got to match with fuel, so then you run into the injector again. You you're on that slippery slope of needing to spend quite a bit more money to get a, a justifiable gain. Yeah, so it's all kind of where you want to invest in the combo. You know, I was saying you could do a blower upgrade. Gen 3 is more efficient, has more headroom, but you're still going to run into those limitations in the fuel system. Yeah, the, I'd say the only relatively cheap thing you could do is a throttle body, but that's relatively cheap. And yeah. the options for throttle bodies are plentiful, but the ones that are going to be worthwhile are kind of limited. So, um, Are you guys releasing... Oh, I already did that one. Lou B says, wish I could like it again. I'll share on my Instagram. Sweet. Uh, I know. Just be sure the 0.75 trim means it's running rich at idle. Injector versus open clogged. He that wants to know just to on be sure. a... On an Eek 5 or Spanish Oak PCM, like the older narrow band stuff, 0.75 short term fuel trim doesn't mean that it's running rich. It actually means that it's running lean. Yeah, correct it and add a lot of fuel. Mm -hmm. But a narrow band also reads lean if the sensor is too cold. It's so like mm -hmm. if the heater sensor's not working, heater circuit's not working, mm -hmm. there's a huge leak in the exhaust. So mm -hmm. that's where you just have to have a look at the data do a little troubleshooting and kind of arrive at the correct conclusion. That and are you 0.75 on long term and 0.75 on short term? So are you compensating for your compensation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll see short and long terms fight each other when shit's screwed up. Yeah. Mike Whedon says, you tell him, Joe. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> Trying. Jonathan Whitaker says, we're up to 71 viewers, 72 now. Oh, gosh. Let's, yeah. let's get a couple more viewers and let's do that drawing. I think the problem is we have so many people here that are loud talkers. They're not even like actually yelling at each other, but they may as well be with how loud they talk. Yeah. It's like, guys, guys. So another good idea is DMX Mike 2 says add torque specs to our install videos. We thought about that. Yeah. The problem is we find that some people either, A, don't know how to read a torque wrench. So it'll be like 25 inch pounds and they'll go 25 foot pounds and shear a bolt off. 
Um, so here's here's the thing. Like torque specs are important if you know how to read a torque wrench and you have no clue how to use a ratchet. Mm -hmm. But for a vast majority of the stuff we supply installation instructions for, I'd say that a torque spec isn't necessary if you're competent mechanically. Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm trying to say. If it was critical, we would include a torque spec. Yeah. But if it's just kind of common mechanical knowledge. Yeah, kind of like the the blower bolts, we include a torque spec because those are critical. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a head head studs, head bolts, main bolts, where there's a bearing sandwich rod in between. Bolts. <laughs> yeah, rod bolts. Um, the supercharger nose drive, because there's a interfere, there's a fit with the rotor plate and gears and rotors and tight clearance stuff. That's a, torque's important for those. Mm -hmm. But you should never have to service that unless you're doing some crazy stuff, anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, time frame on the 18 F150 blower. About the same time frame as the 18 19 Mustang blower. So they're being developed in parallel. Uh, boosted F-150 says, hey, y'all. Hola, Dorian. Hey. What is uh, that Mike says, down? hey, people, log on. I'm ready to see if I win. Hell yeah. Hey, just give us some likes and uh, some subscribes and some shares, and that'll help get more people on here, too. Slabshack says, hey, Justin, any progress on the thought of... On the thought of you mentioned possibly filling the gap for a GT500 monoblade in the future. Yes, Joe and I were talking about that earlier. So mm -hmm. we're going to continue to push throttle body technology. Um, both throttle bodies that anybody can tune, like the Twin 67 and the Twin 69. Mm -hmm. um, because we found out we can't trust people to tune stuff, except mm -hmm. for Joe. <laughs> and then really big stuff that makes a lot of horsepower but requires a lot of tuning skill from somebody like Joe or Lund Racing. Um, like the 160 and the 173. So, um, and then the in-between stuff that requires a little bit of skill. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I want to try and do some power responses. So, Lou B, did you guys tune, uh, do you guys tune for the T350 for fuel economy? F350? Or he, he says T350. I think he means F350. Um, depends on the engine that's in yeah. it. Yeah, hit us up. We can do a little bit with it. Uh, John Halen says, great info, I'll be in touch, and it's always 93, got easy access to VP110 also. Awesome. Uh, we should use Chucky to do quarter mile intake manifold shootout part two. Really? Let's take it to the track. That's where the I, real number is. You know, that's funny, because there's so much drama over the intake manifold stuff, to where people that are porting them they're not CNC porting them or even flow benching them like we're doing. They're using our intake manifold results to port, to sell ported 18 manifolds and ported other manifolds. But um, it's a whole other story. He, here's the thing. The dyno is the best tool to show the minute differences in intake manifolds. Mm -hmm. You would be uh, much more poorly disappointed with the track results. Mm -hmm. um, it is a T350A Transit 350. Oh. Uh, then, then no. <laughs> I'm sorry, this one. Um, Justin, my apologies, it's been asked in the past, but with the 160 throttle body being ready now, um, what will the common GT500 Gen 3 owner see for gains over the 67, um, I guess, mono, is it monoblade throttle body on 93 pump gas? I'd say uh, the gains would be the same as the test that we did before. Yeah, we featured that in our uh, 800 rubble horsepower black slash red stripe GT500. Mm -hmm. uh, we ran the Gen 3 with the 67 and then ran it with the bigger throttle body. Um, so it's all relative to what you're doing, but around 20 to 30 horsepower, and it's very, very limited availability right now. Yeah, so, I wouldn't say it's like completely open and release to market. Yeah. We're, we're sending these to quote unquote special people that we, we have some measure of control over yeah. how the car is being tuned so that we can make sure everything's good. At what point is there a need for oil pump upgrades on a 5.4 GT500? Most GT500s don't break them, but we are looking at offering an upgraded pump for those just if you want that insurance. Because if you're doing like a cam swap or something, it's all apart. Yeah, I mean, you're four bolts and two pickup two bolts away yeah. from doing an oil pump swap as well. Uh, if Joe does some R&D on a 15 to 17 GT with the downshift rev matching, I'd mm -hmm. be down to bring my 15 GT over. 
That's from Travis Schott. Sweet. I'll let you know if we uh, we need you. Uh, Luke says, I'll be in the market come tax time for a bigger heat exchanger. It's come down to either VMPs or the AFCO dual fan heat exchanger. Can you tell me the differences and why I should choose yours? Thanks for your help. Dual pass versus triple pass. Are 11, different. 11 inch fans versus 9 inch. Ours are plug and play, no scotch lock. Yeah. I mean, AFCO makes a nice heat exchanger, but ours is basically meant to kill it. It's like 30% larger. Mm -hmm. And by the way, our product description I'm pretty sure says that mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Uh, people are sitting there saying let's see a nitrous kit on Chucky I know it's not DP supercharger but power is power you want us to try and blow Chucky up 250 three, kit. You know, you, <laughs> 300 you, shot you 300? don't know what's gonna happen with Chucky in the future mount the mother bottle on the back rock paper scissors how big do, of a shot wait, do we have two mother bottles now <laughs> You, we only have one. We have, oh, I think we only have one, but we're getting more. Okay. Two mother so bottles. like, we can mount two mother bottles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, any chance of offering an FBO Max Effort NA package for Coyotes? Thanks. Love the show. Yes, we were talking about that today. Kind I need, of. I need a custom tune. How much are FBO. they N-Gage HP tuners? Uh, needs what? Needs a custom tune for N-Gage HP tuners. Okay. Uh, depends on the platform. Just shoot a uh, sales an email or shoot me an email, Joe at Yeah. Starts around a couple hundred bucks, but yeah. we need to know what's done to your car. So. Yeah. Okay. So I have a handful of questions still here. It's two thirty-four. So I'm really gonna try and rush uh, through them so we can oh, do the yeah. winner. People right. are the waiting. Vayner. Last questions and then drawing for the winners. So let's mm -hmm. let's try and really shoot these out. Um, hey guys, big fan all the way from Germany. I rep VMP everywhere I go. Keep up the good work. Jose Thanks, from Autobahn V8. Awesome. Um, E85, 15 manual, full bolt on, 150 shot of nitrous. What is the estimated horsepower, roughly? 150 more than what it makes off nitrous. Marcus Jennings says, what do you guys think of a autometer wideband for my 07 GT500 Super Snake? Mm. I would prefer to see an AEM. Okay. Um, the install is quite a bit easier on the AEM. Um, we have them on the website. Uh, just a standard AEM Uego. Or Uego, however you want to say it. Uh, what is the rear wheel horsepower on a 17 Mustang GT with GT350 manifold and 120 millimeter JLT cold air long two cutters, no cats, with E85 or flex fuel? 440 to 460. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> oh, that's right where I was going to say. Uh, is it worth going E85 on an NA with tune uh, for a 12 Mustang GT? That's a great question. If you got easy availability, it is a little more consistent, a little more powerful than pump gas, right? Yeah. If you have 91 in the area, no option of 93, I'd say E85 is more worth it. Yeah. My Motor Mafia says, I'm building the rear end of my GT500. I'm debating on the gear leaning towards a 3.90 gear. Any mm -hmm. recommendations, and do you know how much the Mickey uh, ET Street R bias ply tires will grow? I don't know growth at speed for the Mickey Thompson ET Street R. For gear, depends on whether you're eighth or quarter, how much power you're making in your trap speed, if you're that near how fast you're spending it. If you're going to keep it under seven grand, and you make your current trap speeds like under 140, 144. Um, you should be pretty good to go, but if you're going to a 390, I'd say you got to make sure your trap speed's under that, that 140, 144 mark, if we're talking quarter. Can you install a Mustang motor in a truck? Are they the same block? Uh, the exterior mounting surfaces of the 5 liter block are the same Mustang to 5 liter, or Mustang to F-150. We are trying to install the 69 millimeter eight rib pulley on a Roush 2.3, but there is a clearance issue. The pulley spool is slightly larger than the housing, but the back of the pulley is hitting the housing. Have you ever come across this issue where you have to grind back material to clear the back of the pulley? So, uh, I changed those pulleys a while back to add a lip for some strength and some heat sink ability. Mm -hmm. We might have a few eight ribs without a lip but I didn't really know anybody was spinning Roush blowers that hard, honestly. So that's kind of the deal. And with 
Uh, one more question. Uh, can you add two to three boost with a tune? Two, two to three boost what? Is he talking about PSI boost? Boosts. Um, boosts. If you have TIVCT, I can add a lot of boost to it, but I'm not sure that's what you want to do. Um, I'd try not to focus on boost numbers and gaining it. If you're looking, if you have a GT500 and you're looking at the factory boost calculator, then uh, I can make it 10, 15 pounds over what you're currently making, but that's not actual boost, so. Uh, he says pounds. Yeah, if he's just talking pounds, um, try not to focus on how much boost gets added in the tune. Uh, HP Revolution says, so on your video of intake manifold, you guys were running E85? Uh, the intake manifold shootout with track attack was on 93. But track attack's a very loose motor, probably because we tried to make a thousand horsepower with it, so I don't know, that it just dynos well. That and the gear that's in it, it's a 331 car. The oh. 331 cars dyno a lot better, so. Oh shit, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. 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 The 373 cars seem to dyno 10, 15 horsepower less than the 331 cars. For what it's worth, the slower you spin up the car on the roller, within reason you get a more accurate reading because you spend, you put more energy into the roller than you do trying to spin up the rest of the uh, drivetrain. That and if it's on a knock sensor at or knock sensor advance rates based on time. That's more so time. the more time that you spend yeah. at watt, the more timing it can technically add in. And, and for whatever reason, Track Attack had 93 in it and it had long tubes. So very mm -hmm. little restriction leads to very little heat in the chamber. And for some reason, it took a lot of timing, like 28 to 29 degrees every single pass. We watched mm -hmm. that to have a consistent comparison from manifold to manifold. And for what it's worth, that is definitely towards the upper end of what we normally see on 93 tunes. Yeah, so, it's kind of an outlier. I think I mentioned yeah. that in the video. Yeah, if you were, I'd say that's kind of like an in-between of what most people would be on 93 or on E85. Uh, will it hurt on the motor to change pulleys without a tune on a Roush truck? Uh, it depends on how big of a difference, it, and you, yeah. may, you may not gain a lot of power. So get with us, have us tune it, look over data logs, Make sure it's right. Yeah. Kind of blue five O says, just saying what's up. Okay, with that said, we're pretty well caught up on questions. And Let's do this. We are at two forty. Oh man, we're going. I think hard it's today. time for us to go ahead and. Do so our which hat is which? Every kits. winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. Kits, head units. Head units. Okay. So, um, depending on what we pull out of here. Um, for oh. what it's for wait, what wait, it's before worth. Before you pull it, before you pull it, like, yeah, and let's, share. Let's get us some likes. I want to see the love coming through here on Facebook. Yeah. Come on. And some likes on YouTube. We only got shake the hat, shake the hat. Thirty-eight if, likes on YouTube. Come on. If I don't see any more. love, I'm gonna tell them not to pull any names. <sighs> Joe's gonna fall asleep over here. <laughs> so. Well, I'm trying to keep my eyes closed while I shake, so no yeah. one can say, "Oh, I picked someone." So it's oh. like, do I keep my All eyes closed? Right. I see or do I two so my, Three, my hat's kind of folded, so I'll, I'll do what Joe's doing. I'll put it out here. So I, I saw angry is, face. This is kind of ridiculous. Come what on, we got some people likes. crying over here. Crying? Why are they so, why are they so sad? They're worried they're because they haven't won yet. <laughs> they're so sad. Don't be so sad. Yeah. So okay. Michelle's okay. on there. She's like, send it. Hey, hey, Joe. How about we do this? I'll reach over to your bucket, and you reach oh, over to my, my bucket. So. Um, <laughs> Here, let's see here. I got so, one. So, let's see here. <laughs> Hold oh on my. a second. I want to put it in my secret decoder now. <laughs> the secret decoder. Yep. Three. Is that an Excel doc or a Google Sheet? <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Drum roll. Drum roll. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna make you guys work for it. Mike Whedon's giving me, like, rolling his eyes up at me. <laughs> so, first one over here. We've got a Mr. Richard D. is getting his Coyote Gen 2R kit for free. Damn, that's a big check to write. He's <laughs> but, a so Richard. One of them Texas boys. <laughs> Richard, if you're out there, you can contact me. I'm putting my email. And Joe, let me put yours in a secret decoder. And 
Let me double check that. All right, so, Mr. We got a Cobro. Cobro is running. winning. Sweet. I mm -hmm. think Max Andreev might be a Cobro too. However, I'm sorry, Max, you're not winning. Um, Max has a S550 if I recall. Oh, too. okay. Mr. Uh, Mark Antez. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, Mark A, sorry, <laughs> ordered a, uh, a Cobra head unit upgrade, and you are getting your head unit for free. Sweet. So if um, Mark, if you're out there, and Richard, if you're out there, uh, I am giving you my contact information. If you're not out there, we will be emailing you, and we will follow up directly. Yeah, if anybody knows Mark, or... Uh, or the other person, Richard, that just got a got a VMP blower from VMP. The Cobro is that guy. This is a Kai. Uh, uh, Coyote. Coyote. Coyote bro. Yeah. Tag him on social media. Let him know what's up. Maybe you can get to him before we do. Mm. But they are winner winner chicken dinners. Oh that man. Kind of stupid. No, I don't think it's stupid. <laughs> I just think you got to play the game before you can say it. <laughs> you got to get a winner winner chicken dinner before you can say that. And. We There's like a lot of people in do here. have track attack hats on our website if anybody's interested. My wife's going to yell at me for wearing a hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Max, in the room right Max, over there. Max is crying already because he didn't win. Sorry, Max. Aww. Sorry. It'll be okay, Max. There's a lot. Why are some yellow and some not? I don't know. Mm. Hey, we're getting Gen 3 hats oh, wait, they in might like all a couple yellow. weeks. Eric says, awesome, guys. Uh, love the content. Thank you. Man, Joe, this is like a high-energy Tuning Tuesday. I know, right? We're, we're killing it out here. Giving stuff away. We've had like this consistent viewership on YouTube and, to some extent, Facebook. So tons of questions, Carrie. you got to be worn out over there. Uh, we're getting lots of congratulations to people. I'm so glad that right people there. are uh, good sports. Slab Check is saying congratulations. Shelby Canada West, Kona Blue. Congratulations to all the winners. Calandis. Uh-huh. Um, so I was thinking, how about we give away some more free stuff? We do like a horsepower contest. Ooh. Tie that into some free stuff. Lowest horsepower or highest horsepower? Highest horsepower Ooh. with a VMP blower. Well, yeah. Might be a contest in the future here. Hmm. So now that you hmm. teased it, you might want to give a little more context. Well, we just said we might, we might give some stuff away if you can make a lot of horsepowers. And with a VMP should blower. We, should we do the caveat of you have to be able to send in logs and the dyno run files. It's gotta be verified horsepower. Yeah. You gotta talk to your tuner or your dyno shop. Yeah, none of this. Oh, well we changed the parasitic multiplier on the Mustang dyno and it made 1300. And I could set up that should make six. Gotta be on a dyno shop or a shop with a well-known reputation for yeah, so there's, accurate there's dyno There's more numbers. details to come about that. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Whitaker <laughs> says it's time to bring in the fox. Time to bring in the fox. <laughs> so, Justin's already teased it. I'm not going to say anything else, but watch our social media. There may or may not be a, another contest coming up in the near future. We will neither yeah. confirm nor deny. Yeah, it'd be cool too if we took video submissions from the entrance. Ooh, Kalanda do like says, a little video. You have my dino sheet. <laughs> we do indeed, and it was, and it then was pretty sweet. Kalanda. Andrew says. Andrew says he's in. And Eric says Scott Hasty will win. We're gonna get the, the manual swaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so they can get dino numbers. Thunder Biscuit says I'll send my Forza log. <laughs> Forza log. <laughs> oh shit. Forza. So, so what were you saying that it has to be verifiable with a video? Well, I don't know, maybe we could take like a video submission. Like, you know, hey, I'm so-and-so, this is my car, this is my dino pool, this is the number. That'd be mm -hmm. kind of cool. Be a little compilation of everybody out there making horsepower with VMP blowers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know. We'll work on that. But if you have any ideas, drop them here in the comments. And uh, so as long as they're not Forza runs, we can't take those. <laughs> Janssen Vivo says 150 shot on Chucky. 200 shot. Even if we're all living in the Matrix, it at least has to look real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the horsepower and quarter mile time on Chucky? That is will be released soon. So Watch stay the tuned. videos. Um, can you put a 6R80 in an 18 Mustang? Hmm. You can, can do you? Anything. I think you could, but I don't know how controlling the uh, 
the Gen 3 DI stuff would go. Uh, Max says uh, on the contest, do it on 93 only. <laughs> Sounds like a recipe for blown up shit. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Do you Thanks for playing, else? everybody. Next that, that'd be, Tuesday. That'd be hard to police. He says there's no E85 there. Sad. Ship it in. Yeah. Couple pet. Get about the barrels. Yeah. All right, everybody. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Make sure you keep uh, keep an eye out for all the content coming from VMP. Lots of good stuff that we're working on here. We'll see you next Tuning Tuesday. And we will reach out to the owners. Sweet. The winners. The Veners? The winners. <laughs> the Veners. <laughs>